So I don't know about you guys, but something I learned last year was that I really like to run. Incidentally, so does Fred. Now, between you and me, Fred's really world-class at track and field. Truly, the peak of physical performance. A specimen of athleticism. Well... Anyways, as part of his training, Fred runs time trials along a straight section of his track around 100 meters long. He's so consistent that each trial he runs in exactly 15 seconds. On his fourth trial though, he adds a bit of time. The fifth trial, he adds even more. Now, Fred's real confused, and understandably so, right? Because he was certain he was running at the exact same speed, but it took him longer to finish each subsequent trial. Then, he has a sudden realization. As he was running his fourth and fifth trials, he saw a well-meaning but thoroughly distracting firefly just off to his right. Instead of running directly to the finish line, he must have taken an angled path. The next trial, his path was even further angled, resulting in a still longer run. On the stretch of track, the lengthwise and widthwise directions are the only two dimensions of space through which Fred can move. Though he was running at the exact same absolute speed during each trial, during the last two trials his angled path meant that he shared his speed over those two dimensions and thus appeared to be traveling more slowly to an observer looking on. That noble physicist, whose name lives on in a bagel shop, reasoned that not only the three spatial dimensions, but time itself can share in the speed of moving objects. Consider this book. If it had no length, width, or height, it's generally accepted that it wouldn't exist. If this book were to have all of its spatial dimensions but no duration, it wouldn't exist either. It just wouldn't have time. Now for the bread on the sandwich, as I like to call it. Turns out that literally everything from Fred to the rest of the universe to even light is always traveling at the exact same fixed speed throughout the four dimensions of space and time. It looks like when you treat time as equivalent to the spatial dimensions, everything's traveling at light speed. For this to always be true though, the faster something moves to the spatial dimensions, the slower it's able to move through time, and vice versa. Because time affects space, we can really just think of spatial dimensional speed as being the reallocation of some of that temporal dimensional speed into the spatial dimensions. So, some real life examples, huh? Observe, me, right here. I'm sitting still from your perspective, so we can safely say that all of my available speed is being funneled into my motion through time. Or for an opposite example, let's say Fred's been training really hard and is now blitzing his way down the track at 50% of the speed of light. He's spending a good chunk of his speed moving through space, and so will appear to age more slowly, just as he earlier appeared to be moving more slowly on the lengthwise direction of the track by running at an angle. Some of Fred's temporal dimensional motion is being funneled into a spatial dimensional motion. And this is a really cool way to explain why things sitting still are actually moving through time as fast as they can, why things going really, really quickly seem to age really, really slowly, and why things going at light speed don't age at all. <laughs> Thanks for watching.